everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm very excited to welcome back Kayla Ancron. If you don't remember, we did an interview together for the release of Darling, which is a Peter Pan retelling that you should absolutely check out. I will leave a link to that down below. Yes. Oh my God, that beautiful <laughs> cover. I love it. Um, and today we're here to talk about Kayla's new IP project called Murder of Crows. So Kayla, please reintroduce yourself and tell us in three words, what should readers expect of Murder of Crows? So hi, I am Kayla Ingram. I am a young adult author who likes to write thrillers. I'm very interested in intrigue and mystery and tension and all of that good stuff. Um, I have written three previous books. My first was The Wicker King. My second is The Way of the Stars. And my final one is Darling. Um, Lethal Lit was a project that, or Lethal Lit's Murder Crows was a project that I worked on during our COVID summer. So <laughs> it is a very special project. It was a lot of, um, a lot of hard work and I'm very, very excited to talk to you guys about it. Um, it is a book that is based on a podcast called Lethal Lit that follows a Cuban-American um, girl named Tig uh, Torres, I believe. And um, the book is full of mystery, murder, and also cool fighting older people. I'm very interested in like, you know, older characters getting their, getting their stuff in. <laughs> what about Lethal Lead drew you into to write in its universe? Um, I was a huge fan of like Encyclopedia Brown, Nancy Drew, just like mysteries of, of mystery books about kids that kind of go out with their friends and try to solve like real adult mysteries, which is really cool. Um, I like the small town kind of vibe of Lethal Lit. And I also really like the friend group that is um, that they put together for taking her friends. It kind of gives me like LGBT Scooby-Doo vibes. I thought that was just so yes. much fun. Yes, I agree. I don't know how uh, IP works, how you pitch to, like how you get to write IP. So how the, how, how was that process? Um, I'm unsure of how it goes for most of the people, but I can definitely talk to you about how it went for me. Mm -hmm. um, my agent, I told him that I was interested in IP work. Um, if anybody wanted to reach out to find me specifically and be like, okay, I think Kayla might be a good fit. Here's what our project is. Sign the NDA so you can read what we actually want to do. And then, you know, we can go from there. Um, for uh, Lethal Lit, I think I had to audition for it. So they told us like a really broad kind of um, description of what they're interested in reading. And I wrote like the first chapter and sent it their way. And then they looked at everybody's versions of their chapters and wound up picking mine. Um, it's a really interesting process. I've never experienced anything like it before. So um, it was new, new for me. Interesting. That sounds so exciting, but also really like nerve wracking. Yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> um, so what were some of the highlights and what were some of the challenges that came in writing for Lethal Lit? Um, mostly just kind of like bureaucratic stuff. Uh, they're, they have a team that designs the podcast and they do all the, you know, setting up and writing for that. And then they have, you know, the publisher Scholastic and what they want from like a project that needs to be marketed a certain way. And then they have me. And those are three separate groups of people who have, you know, ideas about what they want to get done and different things that they're seeing, you know, from the process. I think it's, there's also an aspect of it that feels very, fan fictiony like I didn't make yeah. these characters you know I didn't make the town I didn't make their personalities and you know when you are writing um somebody else's world there there's a world that exists to them you know that they created themselves that they have all these details about it that you don't have yet and you have to like do your best to try to get as close to um, what you've learned from consuming their their media products so I think that part is probably the most challenging uh, but the team that I was working with, Scholastic's very, very strong. We, you know, work together really well and I really enjoyed the process. Oh, that's so good to hear. Cause it was just listening to the podcast was so fun. And every time I was like, what is Kayla's take on this? I'm so excited to read the book. <laughs> I can't wait. So if you could voice anyone on the podcast, who would it be and why? Who? 
removing the fact that I have a lady voice and (laughs) that as like a, a challenge to it. There is an, there's a character called Mr. Green, who is a, he's like a, you know, mysterious old man. Like he's, he's very, very, you know, interesting. And I would like to voice him. I like Mm -hmm. characters that are mysterious and kind of like silly in their own histrionic way. Oh, interesting. And if you could create like a new character just for you, would it also be like a mysterious cryptic adult? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it looks around like a um a a club of people who are really interested in like mystery and it's just everyone from their town, from people who are just kind of normal to like the weirdo, you know, yeah, people and stuff. And I, I would like to be one of those weirdo people where all the teenagers are looking at me like, hmm. if you were a hollow falls resident and wanted to host a podcast what would it be about i think it would be very funny to do a podcast that was about like just innocuous things around town that would talk about things that tig would usually have in her podcast like Mm -hmm. ooh, somebody's doing something mysterious or like somebody disappeared or whatever but i would completely just like ignore it like, I'd be like, oh, you know, we have a sale at the flower shop. The owner who used to own the flower shop hasn't been seen in several days. So come on down and look at your gardenias or whatever. <laughs> just kind of like, I just have that be the theme of it. And I feel like it would be funny because people would start listening to it just for whatever original topic it is. And then slowly over time, the only people who would be wanting to listen to it are people who are interested in mysteries. <laughs> yeah. Be fun. So, yeah. Yeah. What iconic literary murder do you think the lit killer missed? So I'll put it this way. When you're doing a podcast, you have to consider like the different spaces that you're going to have your characters be in, um, especially when it's kind of like a narrative podcast where you're just kind of listening to the stuff that's going on and people moving around the space. What kind of spaces can you illustrate just with sound that um, readers are able to kind of really participate in in that way? And then also um, the the amount of... uh, time that you have to showcase all of the uh the murders and all of the situations that make it so that the reader has like a reasonable um time experience with the podcast mm-hmm. um so I think that what they chose was was really really well for what happened on the flip side I do think that um the circumstances of uh, murder on the Orient Express where there mm-hmm. are many people working together And then it turns out that they're all working together to like do a thing is a really interesting thing that could be used within the Hollow Falls universe, simply because there are so many like weird and suspicious people that the concept that they're all working together is like very classic, you know, murder mystery resolution. Now, this is like really, really early on in the podcast. They've only started season two. Um, they labeled my book with a number. So I'm assuming they're going to be more of them. Um, so I won't say that that's something that might not be of interest to anybody by the time they're interested in ending the, the podcast. But mm-hmm. I definitely do think that that is something that I kind of am keeping my eye on to see if they're interested in. Ooh, exciting. I like that. I like that. That book was so fun to read. Murder yeah. on the Orient Express was so fun. Mm-hmm. And finally... Um, again, because of fan fiction and stuff. Um, if you could cross over Murder of Crows with any of your books, what would what what book would it be? Okay. Um, the Wicker King and the Way of the Stars are set in the same um universe. Like, universe yeah and they are set in a small town that has another small town that's kind of like really close to it and it's like the small town that they're set in is kind of poor and then the other town that they go to visit to have fun is like kind of bigger and like richer and stuff the concept that there is like another town that's nearest where like all of that stuff is happening where like all of these kind of mild thrillers are happening in this one town and there are like major thrillers happening in this other town and they're like oh we spent all of this time going to this fancy cool town let's maybe check out the one over there and they go there and things are just completely out of control and they're like "Ooh, we thought things were bad in our town <laughs> like that would be really fun oh i'm interested in that idea we should probably tell the publisher the the, pub, <laughs> the 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 big people in the industry who let you know copyright and stuff <laughs> let you write that because i'm interested in that so thank you so much for doing this with me do you have anything else that you want to plug books that you're allowed to talk about stuff like that 
Oh, um, yes. The, uh, I think currently there's only the first season of Leave the Lit Out, but season two is coming out, I believe, the same week that the book is coming out. Ooh. it's it's soon it's very soon yeah <laughs> um, I, I have a terrible head for dates but it's very soon so it's one of those things where you can definitely read my book and then read the or listen to the second um, season and the book is designed to be kind of like a bridge in between seasons so following that format reading the book and then starting the next season um will be a good a good storyline Nice. I'm excited. Um, I keep saying I'm excited, but but it's true. I am excited. Uh, so thank you, Kayla, for joining me again. Um, thank you, everyone else at home for watching. Don't forget to check out the description below so that you can listen to Lisa Lit and buy uh, Kayla's book. And yeah, thank you so much for doing this with me again. And we will see you in another one. Bye. Yes. Bye.